This week on the Ritual Misery Podcast, we're going to geek out about some collectibles. I got your collectibles. Collect this. Oh, that's what she said. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 275 for Sunday, the 21st of February, 2021. This is a show where two lifelong friends and their guests all celebrate geek uh, uh, celebrate all things geek. Damn it, I almost had it. Um, and I just realized that uh, my output is actually going to your track right now. So any sounders I do are going to override you. So I'm going to go ahead and fade out the music and then let you talk. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I'm, I'm not hearing any of the, the sounds that you're playing. So yeah. it's one of those days. <laughs> it, it, it is. It is. Um, I found out that one, my sound card that usually pumps out my system sound is actually distorting the sound, and I can't... It can output it as either a headphone output or a line output, and if you put it as a line output, it, it bumps it up quite a bit, so I need it as a mm. headphone output for the way that it goes into the mixer, and mm. I changed it, and it didn't fix it, and then I was like, fuck it, and I needed to listen to something like, really quickly, so I just bumped it over, and uh, yeah, it was Sunday. <laughs> it's the last day of the week and uh we're getting ready to start a whole new week of a multitude of bullshit um, i can imagine yeah dude uh last night was a blast uh we did a, a, a pre-show for have a drink yep and um it hey. was so much fun uh the, the pre-show that we did was was a blast but then have a drinks episode was a ton of fun um, I, I ended up really, not, being really able to, it. not being able to stick around for that because of things that were going on around here. Uh, David has soccer practice and dinner and things like that. It like all collided into one. I wasn't able to catch it. I was hoping to, but could not catch mm. it. I'll have to catch on the replay. Uh, and then, mm. of course, patrons will be getting the pre-show or yeah, our pre-show for Have a Drink in their feed probably tomorrow. Yeah, patreon.com slash ritual misery. Yeah. Um, so yeah. just, just one of the, one of the many benefits that you get. I, I got a question for you, Kent. Mm. And I think we talked mm-hmm. about this before, but it's worth re- redressing. How often you're, you're 43 years old, about to turn 45 later this summer. How often what? do you. 43 about to turn 45. Look, I, why are you questioning my public <laughs> math? Uh, how often do you get pimples? pimples yeah um not a lot every now and then i'll get one like uh you know like around my nose or something like that yeah. um but um I, I do get the occasional back pimple oh yeah 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 because it's hard to yeah. hard, it's hard to wash back there <laughs> right um yeah. i i so i okay a back pimple is is not out of the norm like i don't carry them around with me like fucking trophies or anything but i'll get one once in a while you know and it'll be painful right, and I'll, yeah. I'll pop it and it'll move on with my life right um my my face cleaning regimen has stayed the same since i was like 17 when i first discovered that i didn't need all the fucking cleaners and shit like that i just needed a really hot washcloth with no soap mm-hmm. it stayed the same essentially just wash my face mm-hmm. with really hot water that doesn't help with ingrown hairs, however. Ah. And I have this issue. I, I, I'm guessing like a lot of people do. But the corner of my mouth, like I can't grow a mustache because the mustache hairs will grow into the corner of my mouth. and It'll just piss me right the hell off. Mm. Well, okay. that happened. I shaved. I like razor shaved last week just off whim because I just figured I'd do it. Um, with the same time I shaved my head, actually. And... I I got an ingrown hair right here in the corner of my mouth. Mm. Well, that sucks. Right on the lip. And it hurt. You got a hair you got a hair lip? Yeah. So I <laughs> I went and I, I fixed that. You know, I did what was necessary to fix that. A couple of days later it was still hurting. Like that's not normal. So I went and looked at it real close in the mirror, and I had a pimple under the ingrown hair. Like, separate pore had gotten pissed off about my treatment of the first pore. <laughs> oh, my God. So, the like, the worst pimple you can get are, like, 
I guess probably like a sty is technically a type of pimple, you know? Like those really suck. I've never gotten one, but I've seen how they, they fuck people's day up. But Oh yeah. But the, sure. the edge of an orifice, whether it's your <clears throat> nostril or your eye or your mouth, are like the worst because for whatever reason, they're the ones that are exceptionally painful. Mm. Mm. And uh I'm gonna go ahead and give the corner of the mouth pimple a zero out of ten stars would not recommend. <laughs> <gasps> yeah, I'll, I'll second that. That sounds awful. <laughs> Good God, man! Yeah. It was Nobody so it was so bad yesterday because uh, I tried to clear it up after the show uh, last night. It was so bad. My wife was like, "Is something wrong with your mouth?" <laughs> and I was like, "Huh? Oh no, that's just a pimple." She's like, "Oh God! Did it take half your face with it?" Like, it was awful. Um, and I mention it now because I can still see it on camera. It looks like little red dip right there. It's oh good, yeah, good. yeah, it yeah. Fucking hurts. Uh yeah. So that that's that's how my evening went after It's, it's not a herpy. <laughs> yeah, it's not the herp. Um <laughs> took David to soccer practice uh, practice last night. Of course didn't want to go in because of COVID, you know, let him go do his thing, but there's no reason for me to go in there and just stand around with a bunch of other parents that are also not wanting to be there. <laughs> yeah. So I sat there and listened to music and podcasts for a while in the parking lot and then realized that his practice was two hours long, not one hour. So I had an extra hour to blow. I could have like gone a little gone to target or gotten some mcdonald's or something but now i was like well shit now by the time i leave and come back it'll be late right so <laughs> they have a couple of really big parking lots out there i just went out there and did some fucking donuts in my new truck <laughs> <laughs> like I, I turned the the skid yeah. control yeah. off and was basically just fucking, an adult <laughs> yeah i was like i was doing all the donuts man i was doing the i was doing donuts like where you're sliding, and then like the the front of the truck starts moving forward, and you start doing a second donut off the first donut, or you like yeah. you do it, and then <laughs> then you turn the wheel the other way, and then you're doing like a reverse donut where the front tires are stable or the back tires are stable, and the front tires are swinging around the back. I had a lot of fun. I spent about fifty three thousand dollars in gas doing donuts in the fucking parking lot, but uh, yeah, you give me give me a wide open parking lot, a very large wide open parking lot with with hardly any ob- obstructions all covered in ice and i'm gonna enjoy myself so that's that's how i spent my last night how was yours <laughs> um i i spent my last night drinking and hanging out on discord with a bunch of people um uh, yeah uh it's probably why i'm low energy right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um yeah no it, it, it was a good time um yeah, I uh, started with the Have a Drink show, like I said, and then kind of migrated into the movie party after that, and oh. um, then just random people on the internet, to include um, hanging out with um, Justin Fraser from Have a Drink show. I We uh, BSed about comic books and stuff for a while, and that was a lot of fun. And um, I feel really uh, like a asshole right now because i'm remembering that he was going to join us for cocktail hour uh before this show and i completely brain dumped that uh so did i because it was a last minute edition and then you said you were going to be late and i was like okay no problem i'll still put note the bouncy castle yeah uh, yeah yeah so yeah. sorry justin uh feel free to jump in though just let, let us know and we'll we'll add you to the call you can hang out with us for a little while yeah exactly uh, uh, try, to, try to make yeah. up for our douchebaggery I um, I watched a, a movie on HBO Max the other night. Uh, have you ever seen Tolkien? No. The the um the the biopic of um, J R R Tolkien's uh, early life, no. like his youth and whatnot. It was uh it was not bad. It starts out when he's like um, I don't know. He's probably like nine or ten years old or something now, at the beginning. Did he grow up as uh, basically a fundamentalist Christian like? really deep into the church kind of thing? Uh, no, not no. really. No, he he had a, a, a Catholic upbringing, but he wasn't particularly religious himself. Gotcha, okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, then it, it goes mostly through his uh, through his college years and uh, like some of his early best friends um, and then how he met Edith, his wife, uh, and um, and then he ends up going to World War One in the trenches and whatnot. Hmm. And then it just kind of deals with that. And, um, you can kind of see some of his, um, like some of the things that kind of influenced 
you know, where he, he eventually goes with like his middle earth stories and things like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it wasn't, it wasn't one of those, um, you know, it wasn't like Shakespeare in love where it just, it's very just in your face. Like here obviously is the character that inspired him to write Macbeth, you know, oh, and crap right. like that. It was, it was, a, it was more subtle than that. I thought it was a, a really well done movie. It was incredibly well acted. I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Mm. Yeah. I, I would actually be willing to watch that because, uh, I enjoy Tolkien and Tolkien things, uh, mm-hmm. but I, I I dread sitting down to actually read The Hobbit and you know <laughs> and the, the, all the books. It just it, they like I've seen the movie and I don't know that there's an added value of spending four hundred eighty three thousand years reading all the books, uh, <laughs> right? Because then well, from what I understand, Hobbit, you could read The Hobbit in like a couple afternoons. The Hobbit yeah. is a pretty quick read. But they they just seem like everybody says, oh, you're missing all the details, and all I hear is you're missing all the drudgery, like. <laughs> yeah. So Lord of the Rings, uh, Tolkien occasionally. Are are you familiar with the phrase "married the fly"? Like if an author no. marries the fly. So so the the so what it means basically, if you if you're telling a story and in, in a, a guy's in a cafe and a fly lands in his soup. Uh, that's usually all you got to say about that. But certain right. authors will spend three pages describing the fly and uh, mm. talking about the history of, you know, when when that fly um, became a maggot and then right. uh, eventually, you know, and, and it just goes on and on and on. And really all you're trying to say is a fly landed in the dude suit. Right. right? So it's called marrying the fly. And uh, Tolkien often did that with, Describing forests, for example. Gotcha. Uh, you know, the, the hobbits were walking through the woods. And then he spends literally two pages describing all of the trees and the foliage and, and all that sort of stuff, which is fine yeah. sometimes, but it can become a bit of a drag on the story. I I enjoy that when there's value add for the story and not just environment. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. like when... when uh, Certain things, uh, the one that comes to mind is explaining solace in Dragonlance. Mm-hmm. The town. If, if Yeah. The, if you don't understand, like, if, if it's your first time into Dragonlance and they describe solace and they spend basically an entire chapter explaining the, the, the trees and how everything's built up in the trees and the bridges that cross between them. And, like, the first time you read that, it's like, okay, I get it. They live in tree houses. Move on. <laughs> But it's never not part of the story. Like, there's never a time when it's like, man, this would have been just as good if they hadn't gone into those details. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, where they only do that, they, they do it sparingly. Tra- Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman do that sparingly. But when they do, once you've read some Dragonlance, when, when they do go into that level of detail, you know it's something that's going to affect things later on. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's almost like a, a hidden um, foreshadowing. But no, I can't. Uh, drudgery is one of the things like there are so <laughs> many, so many times uh, like I've I've read The Stand by Stephen King, the unabridged version. Mm. I'm sorry. There there were entire chapters in there that. Like, yes, I understand why there's a short version of this book, <laughs> you know. Um, and yeah, they do an ad environment and I, I kind of equate, equate that to, to Tolkien, you know, the, yes, it does add environment. It adds a little bit of personality with the players and it gives you a little bit better sense of what's going on. But at the same time, I didn't need it. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't need movie level detail in a book is what I'm saying. So, yeah, yeah. Set descriptions and, and whatnot instructions for the prop makers <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah yeah exactly exactly uh don't give me the screenplay in the book just let it <laughs> uh, yeah uh I, but yeah that's that, that's how i feel about it and that's why i didn't read it I, I was surprised recently i just recently learned actually from the unmade podcast how how much c.s lewis was his writing was integral or integrated with biblical che- teachings like Oh, you just now realized that. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, well I mean, like last year when I when I really started digging into the Unmade podcast, but um, 
I thoroughly enjoyed those stories. I didn't. I, I found them to be fun, entertaining. They're at the right reading level for the you know the sixth grade or whatever it was when I read them. You mm-hmm. know the entire Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe series, the entire Narnia series. I guess. Thought they were great, and then after someone mentioned it, because people have asked me if I've read them over the years, now I've realized, oh yeah, they're asking if I'm you know if I like Christian fiction. <laughs> <laughs> no, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you know, um, you know but, um, I mean, it, it, that's worth knowing, but it's not it's not necessary for the enjoyment of the stories. It's clearly because um, I enjoyed all seven or nine it, books or whatever in the span of a single summer. You know, right. Yeah. Yeah. Those are those are really quick reads, too. Um, but yeah, the whole thing, you know, Aslan being uh, God, basically being uh, Jesus and yeah, be, he, and all of that. It's he, he's the holy the Holy Spirit, whether. Yeah. So wh- whatever yeah. form it takes, because it changes in different books. Sometimes he's actually the savior. Sometimes he's the guide. He's always that that eternal good spirit though that yeah is essentially the yeah Holy Trinity well and there's only there's only a couple of times in the in the entire series where you're kind of beaten over the head with it and mm-hmm. i'm surprised you didn't realize in um what is it the final battle i think is that the name of the last book mm. where um it's basically armageddon and all of that i'm surprised you didn't realize yeah i didn't then, i because... didn't make you the connection huh okay one thing i do like about it though is that um Aslan never takes a direct, a direct uh, 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 confrontation. Like he never takes direct action in the story of the humans, except for the very end. Mm-hmm. You know, in mm-hmm. the very end, it's like that's his moment to act. But in, but up until that, up until the last book, he's always the guiding principle. He's always the the person that that's you know giving you know, helping them out and giving advice, but he's never the one taking the action until the very end, which I thought was really Mm. appropriate. The entire time I was wondering like, why, why doesn't Aslan just go whoop that bitch's ass? But you know, that's, (laughs) that's not how it works. (laughs) Yeah. But uh, did you know that C.S. Lewis and, and J.R.R. Tolkien were good friends? I mean, that fits. (laughs) Right. Yeah, they they used to hang out, and but the the movie Tolkien doesn't have him in it. Um, the whole movie takes place before their friendship began. Gotcha. Yeah, that so. that that fits like uh, Bill Gates and Warren Buffett being friends. Like they, they just it just makes sense. <laughs> you know, they occupy kind of the same space. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Um, what's the latest book you've read? Um. The latest book I had in my hands and read some pages of is uh, the Ninety Nine Percent Invisible City. <laughs> uh, it that um, uh, that is such a good fucking book. It's really good, and I haven't read nearly as much of it as I wish I had at this point. I, um, I take but it, it is very good. I take it it's more of a uh, it's not a it's not a cover to cover. It's more of a almost like a uh, uh, uncle. Uncle Crapper's Guide or whatever, where you can just kind of read a couple pages oh. of it, get a good bit yeah. out of it, you know, and then or Uncle John's Uncle John's Bathroom Reader, you can kind of read a little bit of it, get a little bit, and then put it down, and you're not going to lose the story, like you're not losing the perspective or anything else. Every time you pick it up, mm-hmm. you're going to get a little bit more out of it, and a lot yeah, of it has exactly, already been covered it, in the each, podcast. Each, yeah, each section is like a, it's a completely different thing. It does not one thing doesn't lead to the next. Right. Not it, really. Yeah. yeah. And, and a lot of it is so a lot of it's already been covered in the podcast or it's very tangential to the podcast like they you know the, it launches off from where the podcast left off and takes it in a more mm. verbal or not verbal a more visual form and then also adds more detail and more history that wouldn't have fit in the tightly constructed podcast. Some of it is just completely outside anything they covered on 99% invisible and mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. all new material and and you know they it, it's it's a it's a beautiful book it's wonderful if you if you happen to into a bookstore to escape the covid outside uh <laughs> i don't think that's how that works but check, okay check if they have that book and and just read read a read like one section and if you dig it buy it um if you don't, then don't. But we we don't have any. We already bought our copies, so um, <laughs> like we're not we're not benefiting from it. But if you like ninety nine percent invisible, if you like hearing the history of of design and how the process of design works and how you end up with the result that you never expected, yeah, it's a good book. 
So show. Sure. I think the last novel that I read was probably The Martian, and that was a couple of years ago. Hmm. I have that. In fact, I think it's I think it's on my bookshelf back here. I just haven't read it mm. yet. Yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, I, I liked the movie as well. I thought the movie yeah. was pretty good. The book is like, it's just that little something more. Like yeah. the book is is just a little bit better. I <clears throat> so on Dan Brown's book, um, the one before Angels and Demons, The Da Vinci Code. I found out the movie was coming actually out. A- Angels and Demons came first, and then The Da Vinci Code. Okay, well, The Da Vinci in Code book is, release in it, book release order. Yeah. The Da Vinci Code is the book I'm I'm talking about. When that mm. movie was going to come out, I slammed down through that book. And the book was actually an exceptionally easy read. Like, I finished it in four or five oh, days. Oh, yeah. All of, yeah, Dan Brown is a very easy author to read. Yeah. A lot, a lot of detail, but never, uh, never marries the fly, as you say. You know, mm-hmm. really just it's very fast paced. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Keep, keeps a good pace. And there's some like legit math and things like that in there that they don't get into in the movie. Like, if you want to spend the time and, the ciphers are actually in the books. So if you want to try to crack them yourself, you can. Like it's it's really good. Uh, but I wanted to finish that book before I watched the movie. With the Martian, I knew there was a book, but I didn't have time to read it before the movie came mm-hmm. out. So then I watched the movie. Mm-hmm. So now I'm kind of waiting for the memory of the movie to fade a little bit more. And so I can enjoy the book a, a little bit truer to its original experience. Because, I mean, I'm al- I'll am always be tainted through that experience of watching the movie first. Sure. But I want to, you know, if I watch the movie and then read the book, I'm going to skip over a lot of the book or just breeze over it because I've, I <laughs> assume I've already know what's going on. Um, so I'm, I'm going to give it probably another year or two to kind of fade a little bit more. And then mm-hmm. uh, my, my wife wants to watch the movie. So before I watch it with her, I will go through and read the book. And then watch the movie again. So that's where I stand yeah. on that. So did you like the movie? Did you like the movie of Da Vinci Code? I did. Oh, I did. But I didn't. Did you read the book? Yes. I've read I've read the entire all of all of them. Yeah. Um, so I can't you, think of the character's name now. So you, um, you enjoyed the bo- the books then? Yes, I did. Yeah. yeah. I've I've enjoyed all of them, like the entire series. Um I thought the movies um Da Vinci Code and and Angels of Demons. It's super weird that they're out of order, um, but they they're not good. I don't like them, hmm. especially Angels and Demons. It's just not good. I didn't finish Angels and Demons because it just seemed to jump the shark really early. Like it, the the premise of it kind of felt wonky to me. Mm. Um. But I did like and I did enjoy the Da Vinci Code. I've watched it a few times since then. It's not one of my favorite movies, but it's got my favorite actor in it, so that helps. That's um, probably my least favorite Tom Hanks role, actually. Really? Yeah. Like I didn't like. There's very little that I can say good about that movie. I, I just did not like it oh. on in any way. I I did, but I I've never watched it through the lens of comparing it to the book, so. As a standalone experience, yep. I enjoyed it. Of course, I'm I'm also the guy that enjoyed uh, the Nicolas Cage movies, where they you know try to rescue the the Declaration of Independence and it's got secret. Codes oh and yes, shit. yes, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's a fun movie. That's that's fine. You know, the, these and, are all just the adult versions of the Goonies in my mind. Uh, it's, it's kind of my <laughs> my favorite fucking aspect of things. You know, National Treasure. That's Na- yeah, National about. Treasure. Yeah. There we go. Yep. Yeah. I thoroughly enjoyed National Treasure and National Treasure 2, even though the entire, like, it, it takes me a lot. I have to watch them by myself because I can't, well, I certainly can't watch it with anybody who's who's never seen it before and talks during movies. Oh, um, right. But yeah. because it, it does take a big leap of um, suspension of disbelief, you know, to follow those movies, sure, sure. all of them, in fact. But yeah, I, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy those. Yeah, um, yeah, that yeah, I don't know. Nicholas Cage is fine. I I really like um, Tom Hanks, but yeah, there's just something about that movie. Um, uh, D- now, yeah, what was the movie where he was stuck in the airport? Uh, was like what was the, that? The movie Passenger called? or something? The Terminal. The terminal. terminal. Did you enjoy that? Yeah, it was fine. Yeah, I really it, love that movie. That's it, it, it's kind of reminiscent of um um castaway to me yes. in a weird way because he's just kind of 
even though he's not 100 percent alone in the airport he's kind of on his own well you know yeah, he, he's he's in his own reality bubble you know yeah. like he, he's experiencing it differently than all the other characters in that movie mm-hmm. um how, how about castaway did you did you enjoy castaway yeah yeah see I most people that i know that like tom hanks hate castaway and castaway is one of my top 10 favorite movies of all time like i oh, fucking wow. love that movie I think it's it's amazing the the even to the point where I don't like the fact that they didn't show me what was in the fucking box at the very end. <laughs> I still like that part, you know. Um It's yeah. like the briefcase in pulp fiction. <laughs> right, right. It's just it's that it's that thing that you just don't know, but yeah. Um I I would say that my least favorite Tom Hanks movie <sighs> I don't, I don't know. That's that's pretty fucking tough for me. <laughs> He's been in so many things, man, and so many good ones. Yeah. Maybe. Do you like his like really old stuff, like his comedies from the eighties? I was gonna say probably like Animal House. Was it? Wait. Was it Animal House? Was it? No, the I one, think you're you're think no, you're thinking of um the one where Bachelor the, Party, Bachelor Party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's probably <laughs> he's actually probably, embarrassed now. He's embarrassed now about that movie. Yeah, well, it, it's probably my least favorite. Uh, yeah, that and the one where that's they good. buy the farm. Uh, oh, um, where the the entire movie only has like two things I remember about it, and that's when they were dropping the quarters in the uh, in the jar to make the phone call, and the operator's like, "I know the sound of a quarter in a jar. You can't fool me." Uh-huh. And, and and when they they pull up the moving van up to the bridge and they're like that's not a bridge that's termites holding hands, you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and I oh the money pit it was called the money pit. the money that's pit. Yep, there you go. Yep. yep. Uh, what yeah. about Splash? Do you remember Splash? Splash was the first time I saw titties on screen. Hey, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Daryl Hannah. <laughs> yeah, which is funny because I don't find Daryl Hannah attractive at all now. But then I watched the movie like forty-five times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You watched that part? No, I, I watched the whole thing because I, <laughs> I also I, I love Eugene Levy. Like I think he's one of the one of those typecasted characters that just still makes me fucking laugh, regardless of that he's yep. always playing the same role. Yeah, he he is pretty. Great. And then, I actually, I I just saw him on um, Saturday Night Live a couple weeks ago. His son was hosting. Oh uh, yeah, yep, 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 yep. Um. Yep. Uh, Eugene Le- Levy takes you into American Pie, another fucking series of movies that are just absolutely ridiculous. That the first three I could watch any time, and after that it kind of falls off. But like American Pie, American Pie Two, and then American Wedding, I think all three of them are fucking hilarious. They're yeah completely the, immature, but I, I love them. Absolutely, yeah, the, yeah. The first one in particular, like I've I've probably seen the first one twenty times. Right, I, I don't know. Like it's. And it's so dumb. Like it's one of those movies. Like I'll be embarrassed if somebody walks in the room and catches me watching it. Right. It's it's a it's total guilty such pleasure. Such a dumb movie. It's yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a total guilty pleasure. Uh yeah. But ah, uh, such is life. Well, I don't even know how we got talking about fucking movies, but whatever. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> that's all this. That's that. Th- this is probably one of the realest conversations you and I've had on the podcast. Mm. Like this. This is how our conversations Indeed. typically go. Um, hey man, uh, you got a thing on here called Geek Out. Is that a is that a thing that I should be hitting a button for? Yeah, yeah, do it. Now you've got a guest. Okay. All right. So, are you familiar with the game Geek Out? Um, you should be we, because we played it a version of it in our live show. Yeah, I was gonna say a few I, years I, ago in Austin. It rings a bell, but I don't know that I've like played it like the, an actual game. Yeah, so I want to play a uh, a modified version of the game. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna read a category on a card, mm-hmm. and um, uh, I think for the first round we'll start with you. You will name an example. Of the, whatever that category is, and then uh, then I'll name one, and then wh- whoever whoever can't name one 
loses that round. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep, it does. Okay. All right, so I will give you the choice because I've got the regular Geek Out set and I've also got the Disney set. Do you want a Disney card or do you want the, the regular set? Disney. Let's go with Disney because otherwise it's just going to get ignored. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go ahead and roll the colored die here before I draw the card. It is – is that black? I think it says black or purple. Blurple? Oh, The Burbs. God, I love that fucking movie. Oh, The Burbs is pretty good. Oh. Everyone's um, paranoid and yeah. they think that the neighbor's a murderer or something. And they're yeah. fucking right, but they don't know it until like, oh my God, so good. <laughs> it's never actually confirmed in the movie. You just have to assume. Anyway, yeah, so good. Yeah. All right, so Purple uh -huh. is... Uh... Ooh, okay. I'm not... Okay, I'm going to read this one. Two films, well, okay, so it says two films, but we're just going to say films, right? Because mm -hmm. we're just going to go back and forth. Films that have become video games. Okay. And this is in the Disney category, right? Yes. So, so Disney films that have become video games. Okay. The Lion King. That's a, damn it, that's the one I was thinking of. Uh, the um, Aladdin. Ooh. Um. Films that have become video games. Chippendale. Was it? Was yep. that an NES game? Yep. Chippendale's Rescue Rangers. Mm. Really shitty. Um. Oh, I'm pretty sure there was a DuckTales Damn game. Damn it. Damn it. Um, so I, now, now that I wait, hold on, hold on. Now that I'm reading this question again, films that have become video games. Oh, films. so I don't know if. Uh, uh, but we both named a a, a cartoon, so they kind of right. equal each other out. So films. back to you. Films. <laughs> Let's go with. Yeah, keeping in the spirit of it, we obviously can't do any of the Star Wars movies. Right. Because they they were video yeah. games before they became Disney properties. Um Yeah, and that's really the problem with this game is that um people will get mad at each other for what counts and what doesn't count. Right. Um, shit. There's got to be one more. I know there was a Pumo, uh, Pumba and Timon game, but I don't know if that was separate from Lion King. Mm. I think it was. I'm going to say Timon and Pumba. Lion King 2, Timon and Pumba. Okay. I'm just going to let you have this one because I, I was racking my brain while you were thinking, and yeah. I, I don't freaking know. <laughs> so there, there's a point for you. Um, all right. So I guess I will begin on the next one and I'm going to choose one of the regular cards. Okay. Roll the die here. We got yellow. Okay. Yellow. Iconic Star Trek catchphrases. Oh, wow. All right. Um, oh, you're going to win this one. <laughs> I'm giving her all she's got, Captain. I'm just a doctor, Jim. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll take that. He, he always added something to it, like I'm a damn it, Jim. I'm a doctor, not a yeah. You know, fill in the blank of the whatever's <laughs> happening. Uh, ah, engage. Um. Oh. Beam me up, Scotty. Ah, damn, that's good. Um, um, open hailing frequencies. 
Um, on screen. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Picard used to always say that. I yes. don't. Rem- I, don't I, I don't remember what. Uh, what. What. Uh, what. Uh, uh, Kirk would say, but he he had a similar, a similar one to do the same thing. But yeah, Picard yeah. is always yeah. on screen. <laughs> um. Man, I should know so many more. Um, uh, yeah, you've consumed so much more Star Trek than I have, and we've only covered, oh, I know, we've only covered the bridge. <laughs> That's so true. Um, damn it! Uh, crap. You know what? I'm giving it to you. I'm giving it to you. <sighs> I, I, sh- I shouldn't have that one. That's, do you want, that's, a, di- do you that, want a Disney? Or that's a, that's uh, more your loss than it is my win. I I, I tell you that. <laughs> do you want a, Do you want another Disney or do you want a, a regular one? Uh, I'll go Disney again. I'll be the Disney dude. Okay. All right. We rolled a blue this time. Okay. Characters from Monsters University. Sully. Oh dear. Okay. Um, Mike Wazowski. Boo. Was she in Monsters University? Oh, I don't know. I've never seen the movie. Yeah, same. I just, I just assumed she was there because she was such a big part of Monsters Inc. No, yeah, I, guess, Monsters I guess she University wouldn't be. Is a, okay, it's a prequel. It's a yep. prequel. I guess yeah. you you get this one. Okay. Because I've literally named all three <laughs> three of the characters I know. Well, I. Yeah, that's yeah, same. I okay, fuck it. I take. I'll take it. All right. Um, what, what was that lady? The Mike Wazowski. Oh what? yeah, I can't remember her name either. Either, either she either. ended up being the. Well, I'm not gonna spoil the movie. Right. Um. Okay, so I rolled a black this time. And that one's going to be Cohen Brothers films. Ooh. Son of a bitch. Cohen Brothers. Um, um would that be there's something about Mary? Is that Cohen Brothers? I think so. Okay. How are we gonna fact check ourselves on this one? <laughs> That's Well what we can do is put I I will say Wedding Crashers, and then we will check. Uh, okay. And if either of those is, then we'll just call it a fucking tie. If not, then obviously the point goes somewhere. Okay. <laughs> Are you looking that up? Yeah. That's how we'll do that. Cohen Brothers. Oh, I should have clicked the next one. It was Cohen Brothers Filmography. That'd be a better one to go to. Um, Fargo, Big Lebowski, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Mm. Uh, no Country for Old Men. Yeah, neither one of them are. So we both fucking lose. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap! So, oh, I'm looking up. There's something about Mary. I gotta see who who did this. There's something about Mary. Is a 1998 film from oh it's the Farrelly brothers ah the brothers. not not the Cohen brothers damn it okay uh yeah I was totally thinking the Farrelly brothers on all all these things um yeah yeah got, dumb and, dumb and did, they did Shell dumb and Hal, my, me myself and yeah. Irene yeah yeah, yeah yeah no okay well, yeah we suck all right <laughs> okay. So it's still two, or, two, two, one, two, one, two, one. Two, one, yeah. Two, one. All right, so you just got a green for Disney. Okay. Two songs with, or well, forget the number. Songs with a color in the title. And since it's Disney, I guess it's got to be a Disney song, right? Yeah. 
Hmm. Songs with a color in the title. Oh, that's tough. Um. I don't know. Yeah. Um. Hmm. I think that's a wash <laughs> on that one. I'm gonna pull another card because that's bullshit. Another Disney. What did we get? Green. Green. Oh fuck this category. <laughs> do, do you know Disney songs? Like, because I don't I, really. I know a lot of the newer ones. All right. Well, let me let me throw this one out here then. A song from a a goofy movie. No, it's been way too long since I've seen that. Yeah, and I don't even think I've seen that entire movie. All right, one more. Titles in which an animal duet sing a song. Hakuna Matata. I'm I'm reading the question again. I'm wondering if they're wanting the movie name or the song name. It says titles in which an animal duet sing a song. So I think it's actually oh, the the movie, the movie name. Which obviously you, I, I know King. you know what movie that's from. Yeah. Um, which sucks because there's like five more in there. <laughs> right, right. Yes, and I'm trying to think of any of any any movie, any other movie <laughs> that has two animals singing together. Oh my goodness. Uh, uh, damn, man. Uh, probably. Oh, um, um, Robin Hood. Aristocats. Uh, the one with, uh, with the fox and whatnot. Yeah. Aristocats. Okay, Aristocats. Yeah. Uh, mm, I feel. I feel like animals sang together in Dumbo. Did the crows, the racist crows, <laughs> did they sing? They did. <laughs> the uh, Jim Crows. The Little Mermaid. Hmm. Okay. Yep. Um. Uh. Oh. Oh. Cinderella. Ah. The, yeah. The, the mice. The mice sing the. We will make a pretty dress for Cinderella or something like that. I can't remember. <laughs> um, I just remember the mice saying Cinderella. <laughs> uh, um. Yeah, I don't know, because like, I can think of like uh, the Beauty and the Beast, but those are inanimate objects. Right. I Yep, that came into my head, too. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm out. Nice. Score is two to two. So let's do one more as a tiebreaker. We'll go over to the normal one. We got a yellow. Oh, this is another Star Trek question. I'm gonna pull a different card. Yellow. Uh, um, the uh, Jungle Book would have been one. Yeah, that's pretty much the only one. Only other one I'm seeing. Okay, I'm I don't remember a duet in the Jungle Book though. Yeah, because Blue uh, sings with uh, some of the other animals. Hmm. Yep. Okay, I believe you. <laughs> All right. Oh, dear God. I wish I'd stuck with the Star Trek one. <laughs> Franchises in which genetically engineered super soldiers appear. Oh, okay. This is tough, man. Genetically engineered super soldiers. Yep. Um, so I will start by saying... Captain America. Star Wars. Which super soldiers are you referring to? 
the stormtroopers, the clones. Clones, by definition, are genetically modified. Yeah, but I wouldn't. I don't know if they're. Are they super soldiers? I mean, they're just soldiers. All right, fuck it. I'll take it. I'll take it. Uh, <laughs> that's fine. Just because uh, they can't aim, <laughs> they have no pain tolerance. <laughs> right. Yep. Uh, and their armor is useless and everything else. Yeah. They're definitely not super soldiers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely not. But they are genetically modified. I'm going to count it. They're, they're super. They're super by their numbers alone. Yep. Um, Universal Soldier. Um. Damn it! I had another one. Oh, 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 oh. GI Joe. Hmm. Okay. Um. Do you care to challenge or let that one slide? I'm letting it slide. Okay, good. Whatever. Thank goodness, because yeah. I don't think that's right, but it's the only thing I can think of. Ah, damn it. I don't, I don't, I don't think that would have stood up to scrutiny, but you, you've just declined to challenge. Right. <laughs> um, oh, my goodness. So there there was a movie. Well, no, it's got to be a franchise, so I don't think a single movie would be a, a franchise. Um uh, the dogs, The dogs don't think so either. Yeah. It's a good thing they're not the judges. Right. Man, it's going to be a crime if I if I let you win with your bullshit answer of GI Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Genetically engineered super soldiers. Uh Man, that's another thing that sucks about this game. Like you know probably 30 movies that have these things, but like, good luck naming them when you're on the spot. Um, uh, yeah, I'm fuck it, fuck it, you win <laughs> three to two. Amy, that sucks, oh, man. Yeah, uh, now, now I'm on the hunt for uh, uh, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure there are tons out there that we just can't fucking come up with. Exactly. Yeah, I, I know for sure there are. Um, so, today you wanted to talk about collectibles. Yes. Do tell, sir. Well, I wanted to talk about collectibles because I... I collect pops. I don't have like a heavy collection. I don't collect them for money. That's why they're all sitting out of the box. Mm -hmm. I have Dragonlance books that I collect that are mostly in eh shape. Um, I have certain other collections, like little things that I've just kind of collected. Like I have a dice collection that has, you know, glow in the dark dice all the way down to translucent dice that you can barely see the numbers on. Mm -hmm. Um, I collect, you know, challenge coins, but I'm not like I like I collect things, but mm. I'm not a super collector in anything. So, right. What is I wanted to know, what is one thing that you collect that nobody would expect you to collect? Like we all know that you drink and you have, you know, chalices from 43 different nations and shit like that. <laughs> right. But what's what's the thing that you actively spend money on? That doesn't like it's not an investment. It's just a collection of shit that you just think is awesome. Um, not so much these days, actually. Um, I also have some pop figures, uh, but I've I've never spent a dime on a pop figure for myself. They've all been gifts. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. challenge coins. I also have a collection of challenge coins. Um, but again, like nothing super recent. Um, let's see. Oh, I used to collect um, DVDs of wrestling pay-per-views. <laughs> <laughs> There's a thing that people might not not suspect. <laughs> that, that's obscure. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I haven't I haven't collected a single DVD in in several years now. <laughs> right. Right. Um, uh, I I also collect uh uh swag from just everything like mm. for some reason and i never do any i've got i've got two nerdtacular 17 bags over here full of fucking swag from random shit that i just have not done anything with because i'm too lazy to display it or anything 
Speaking of swag, I I ordered my have a drink T-shirt last oh, night. Oh, I need to do that too. Yeah. Yeah, I almost forgot. It was a good thing that I I opened a tab in a browser while I was doing other stuff because mm. I I completely spaced it until I saw that open tab. I was like, oh, oh that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, why don't you collect? Like, is it just not something that you're into, or is it the money aspect, or like, is it something else? No, I I think. Um, because I used to collect a lot of things, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, comic books, uh, baseball cards, uh, all, all sorts of things, toys, like action figures and whatnot. I used to collect a lot of things. I, I think part of it is just I'm not as interested. And the other part, I, I think I've got this um, this hang up on um, like things taking up space for no reason. Mm. Uh, because I over the last couple of years, I've, I've tried uh, I've been calling it the great purge, even though it's kind of like a slow, a slow go now. The, the, um, the trickle, but, but like, yeah, but yeah, t- taking trips to, um, you know, to the to the landfill or the recycling center or the um, donation collection point or having garage sales. And, you know, like I've been trying to get rid of things, mm-hmm. not like get more things right <laughs> um, so that's not, actually that's probably the bigger piece of it than uh, than lack of interest my my thing is i i have an issue collecting for value it's too much fucking work mm, it's the mm-hmm. same reason i don't buy stocks you got to really know what you're doing know about like a lot about it and even even if you know everything there is to fucking know, there's no way of predicting the future with any certainty. And I don't want to start collecting something that's valuable, quote unquote, and then it lose value. Like I'm deathly a fucking afraid of that. Like that's where I, I that's where I draw the line. That's that's my biggest hiccup. Mm-hmm. So when I collect things, I just collect things that I'm interested in. Like you know, and and um, I don't think I've. I think I've only ever paid for one of my pop figures at full retail value. Mm-hmm. You know, um, everything else has either been on sale or in the clearance bin or a gift to include this guy. Oh, hello. So, yeah. Uh, Mandalorian. It's, Din, it's, all, it's all Din Jaren and Grogu. And Grogu, yeah. You know, uh, taking off in a rocket. And that's my most recent one, so it's got a, like a little special spot up here because it blocks out something that I have functionally using, but I don't like the look of. Uh, <clears throat> I've got a I've got a small box that's holding my monitors still, so they don't sag in because whatever reason they like to sag in. But then I've got this <laughs> shitty looking box sitting there, so I just put a, 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 a Funko Pop in front of it, and then I can't see that, and I see my most recent pop instead. So yeah. Um. Yeah, and I, I collect like my Dragonlance collection's pretty big. I've read most of it. I'm never gonna read all of it, but you know that's something that I collect. And and uh, you know, I just I I don't I don't do the collection thing. I used to. I used to be really into collecting like Spawn uh, uh, comics. Like, and I think I think it's just that there's too much to collect, and too many people. Mm-hmm. It's too much to learn, and I, I, I just don't have that. I don't have that dedication to it, I think. Yeah, when I was a kid, I collected anything Star Wars, mm-hmm. whether it was uh, you know, a notebook that had Yoda on the cover. I would collect that. Um, you know, posters, um, glassware, um, yeah. Of course all the toys, right? Um, you know, lunch boxes. Uh, just you name it. If it had Star Wars on it, I wanted the thing. Um, but then the uh, the mid yeah, the mid 90s happened with the like the resurgence of Star Wars when the Timothy Zahn novels started coming out, and then yep. the buzz of um, Episode One, uh, you know, yeah, the special editions and Episode One and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, d- no, way too much stuff. Like it's, I would go broke even just trying to pretend like I was a Star Wars collector. Yeah, like it's not happening. So, is there anything that you are like a no shit avid collector of? I don't think so. Yeah. Um hangovers? <laughs> no. I I have one thing and I actually used it this morning um before uh, I collect Eeyore coffee cups. 
Oh. And interesting. Okay. Any, anytime I see a new Eeyore coffee cup, not an Eeyore glass or like a little espresso cup, but an actual Eeyore oversized coffee mug. They're all oversized. I don't I don't I don't have any that are not oversized. You know, this is like a 14 ounce cup. Um mm. I will buy it. I've gotten one every time I've gone to Disney. If I go into a Disney store and there's an Eeyore mug that I don't have, you know, but I don't actively search them out. Like I'm not trying to keep up with the Joneses on having a full collection of Eeyore mugs, but it's one of those things. Like if I come across one, I'm fucking buying it. That's, Mm -hmm. that's one thing. And that's probably the only thing that I'm really hardcore dedicated about. Each one of my Eeyore mugs has a, has a memory attached to it. Even though sometimes that memory is just the memory of buying the mug, you know? Mm. But as far as who I was with or, or, or where, where I was, um, this one in particular is one that I got, uh, the first time that I went to a Disney store with Amber, that's where this one came from. So Amber, Amber was three years old or so. So this mug is (laughs) 17 years old now. Um, still in really good condition. Of course, I don't drink a lot of coffee, but I, I've been drinking more coffee lately. And uh, this is one thing that I definitely collect. And I've got a couple that are gifts, but most of them I've purchased myself. And yeah, they're uh, that's one thing that I do collect hmm. that people might not expect of me. I mean, I'm sure you didn't expect that I collected certain coffee cups. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. And, uh, and wow. I, I don't have a lot. I've probably got like maybe 10, you know, but they're all they're all different and they're all pretty cool. So. Yeah, um, the the thing that I would really like to talk about is my comic book collection, mm. uh, but I think we're gonna save that for next show. Yeah, yeah, you you do or at least did have a hell of a comic book collection in high school. Um, yep. yeah. I still have it. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't going nowhere. I I still I do have yeah. some some collections um some comic books i got a small stack of them down there most of them are first episode or first issues of obscure shit that nobody cares about so um all right dude uh that's that's uh that's been collectibles so if you would like to collect some ritual misery swag head head over to ritualmisery.com slash swag and if you don't want ritual misery swag at least send us an email telling us what collections you have tell us the most impressive collection you've ever found for me i found this was in 2000 2010 yeah 2000 no 2008 in 2008 i found a listing of on eBay in the local area for an entire uh, Zelda collection. Every Zelda game on every system that had been released up to that point, unopened, still sealed in packages. So if there's a Zelda game, they had the game unopened, they had the system that game went to unopened, and they were selling the entire batch of it in 2008. So they had the Super Nintendo, the NES, the Famicom, the uh the Nintendo sixty four and then all the games unopened. Uh, why? Was, like, why would somebody have that? It's, that is right. People bonkers. People collect shit. I mean, it sold for like ten thousand dollars. So, you know. Yeah, that's fucking bonkers. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's that's what you can do. Shoot us an email, podcast at ritualmisery dot com. Let us know the thing that you collect or the most impressive collection you've personally seen. Uh, of course, I didn't personally see that collection, but you know, you get the point. Um, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I had that opportunity to buy it, and I was like, mm, 10 G's, a little out of my price range as a newly divorced and remarried uh, man. So, yeah. And then, of course, you can find links to everything that we talked about that may have a link that we remember to put in there in our show notes at ritualmisery.com. Find all of our links there. Uh, Kent, we will be live one more week on a Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific, and then we are transitioning to a Sunday time, and it should be... I don't know. We'll figure that out. But uh, yeah, don't, uh, yep. don't don't hate us if you've heard us say for the last four years that we're live on Thursday nights and we're no longer live on Thursday nights. <laughs> right. You have been warned. And if you are a typical podcast watcher, like you use the video to watch the podcast in your podcast feed, 
uh, th that had hit kind of a nadir of subscribers. So I am not producing it anymore. It is still available on the YouTubes. Um, and uh, yeah, if, if it's something that you absolutely need in your life, let me know and I might, I might be able to go back to that. But other than that, that's how that works. Kent, any last words before I hit the outro that you won't be able to hear and, and we'll drown you out? <laughs> hit us up on Twitter, RM underscore Del Noche and Ethan Kane or Ritual Misery for the show. Um, other than that, I, I'll see you guys on Thursday. Love you. All right. And of course, thank you to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use his music that is currently playing that Kent can't hear. Because once again, I changed some shit. Uh, for you, for me, and for Kent, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this broker. <laughs> R-A-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-L-Y